Hi everyone, Chris here, and we're gonna take a look in this video at the gaming performance. This is an extended look. I'm gonna test out a few more titles than my in-depth review. By the way, that's in the channel. And yes, as per the title of this video, I'm going to be giving away one Poco X3 NFC. This is a worldwide giveaway. As you can see, I do have two units of this now sent out to me from Xiaomi. So if you have not seen my full review, the spec of this phone is really quite something for the price. Snapdragon 732G. We have six gigabytes of RAM that is LPDDR4X spec across the two models. This guy here has 64 gigabytes of UFS 2.1 storage. Also the giveaway unit that I'll be sending out also has the 64. So I'm gonna be taking a look at the FPS using the inbuilt developer option frames per second monitor and our refresh rate, which is 120 Hertz. Yes, this has 120 Hertz screen. It is IPS sadly, and the touch sampling rate is 240 Hertz. So these are the settings I'm gonna go with here with PUBG. So if you put it onto the HD graphics option, we've only got the high frame rate option. So I need to stick it onto balanced and then select ultra for our maximum FPS. Now the gameplay is very good. It's smooth, it still looks very good and in balance as you can see here, but take a look at our frames per second. So it's running at 60 Hertz the screen for some reason here, but that's fine because it's only running of course at 40 frames per second. It's capped out at 40. So obviously we do need the developers to add support for higher frame rates with this particular game. So that'll be from Tencent and it could also be maybe Xiaomi needs to have a firmware update as well for this. You gotta remember that the Snapdragon 732G is a very new chip. So it's gonna be normal that a lot of games just won't support the higher frame rates. Mobile Legends is running at 30 frames per second on average here. I have seen it reach 60, but it does seem to be like it's capped at 30, even though it shouldn't be. So I don't know why this is happening, but it is still very playable with this frame rate. Graphically looks good on the medium setting and changing it to high, it is still the same frame rate more or less. So that's why I think it's actually being capped for some reason. Perhaps it just doesn't realize this chipset yet. It's so new. It's only, you know, just come out. So that could be the reason why we're stuck at 30 frames per second, basically, with Mobile Legends. This title here is Real Racing 3. And unfortunately, again, 60 frames per second, but it's a smooth, constant 60 frames per second. I don't see any frame notes. It just sits there, even with all these cars on screen right now. It's quite a light engine title. I mean, it is old, but it's probably still Android's best racing game, definitely here. And even with the various other views in the cockpit, constant 60 frames per second. And with these loudspeakers, dual loudspeakers, it's quite immersive and overall very enjoyable gaming experience here. This title's War Robot. So I was asked to review this particular one here. And the performance is good, but it, look at it. It's capped at 30 frames per second. This is on the high setting and it's playable. It is smooth. And because it's only 30 frames per second, it's certainly not getting warm at all. This title here is Shadow Fight 3 on the high settings. I always thought this one would actually run with an uncapped frame rate, but you can see it's clearly being capped at 60 frames per second. And I ended up losing the last two rounds. Last round, so hopefully I can win this one back. It's a good graphics, excellent gameplay in this one. And you can duel other players too, if you've never tried this one out. It's actually been out for many years. But it runs really good with the Snapdragon 7 32G. Oh, and I got lucky here, so I've managed to win this particular duel. This title here is CSR2. It's a drag racing game, very good graphics. So right now I've got to try and keep this in the green here. Okay, good start, and then I'm gonna shift it to green, of course. Perfect shift. And yeah, we've got my nitro, gotta use that. See if I can win this one. And an easy win right there. So that game, 60 frames per second, but it's a constant 60, so that's great. Now this is a more demanding game, Shadow Gun Legends. This is on the high setting. If you set it to ultra, you're not actually gonna get even 30 frames per second with this title because I think it's poorly optimized. Now this is a good way to demonstrate to you what is actually happening right now. It's running at 30 Hertz. This is the power saving 
with the adaptive refresh rate and adaptive frame rate. So right now, as soon as I touch the screen, I pointed this out in the full review, it's then got up to 120 hertz, and now we can push a higher frame rate there as well. So in really intensive action parts here of this game, the frame rate does suffer a little bit. It's dipping down now, you can see. And it will sometimes hit 30 frames per second. So a little bit of lag, so you can see right now, 30. Bit of lag is coming through and I'm experiencing this. You can see it, but just lower the settings down even further to low if you don't want this and to push the highest frame rate. So Call of Duty on the high setting with the max frame rate, we're getting on average 50 frames per second, I would say. This is just a guess. You can see right now it's about 50, it's up to 60. 60 is the cap, by the way. So this game, of course, doesn't support 120 frames per second, at least not yet. I hope that in the future the developers will at least unlock that. So this is playable, it's good, and actually much better than I thought. Remember, this is on the high setting, so if you want to have a more steady frame rate so it doesn't go down to 38 or 39, then of course use a lower setting. And I'm getting shot at already by someone. It must be a bot. Oh, 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 oh. Alright, got him. Just. Only just, but someone else is shooting at me, so okay, here he is. Not gonna last long. Uh-oh, swap. Dead. <laughs> In this title here, this one's Grim Vela. This So Grim Vela, this is another title here that does run at that 120 frames per second. You can see it's actually running about 90 frames per second here, 100, so the GPU at times with a lot of enemies and lots going on the screen is struggling a tiny little bit here, but I mean, this is still very good for the type of chip it is, the Snapdragon. 732. It just seemed to really dip down when there was a lot on the screen. So right now it's at 100 frames per second. So very, very smooth as you can imagine. And this next title here is called Critical Ops. And this one is a game that does have also unlocked frame rates. So this will run at 120 frames per second, as you can see. And it will be more or less always about 120 frames per second. But let's jump into a little bit of action here to see if it will actually dip down at all. So it's getting Normally always over 110 frames per second. I'll see if I can get a kill with this game as well. So look at that, really, really smooth, as you can imagine, running at 120 frames per second. And there we go, got a kill. And look at that, frame rate still almost the whole time at 120 frames per second. This is on the high setting. So I did end up gaming in the end for one hour and it does get a little toasty and I'm talking about temperatures of up to 48 degrees. This is warm. Now remember my ambient temperatures here are about actually 26 degrees and I'm not using a case. If I was to use a case and you were charging at the same time, then expect temperatures I would say of at least 50 degrees, which I would classify now then as hot and almost getting a little too hot. So if you're gonna game on this for extended periods, definitely make sure you've already got a full charge so you're not charging at the same time and take the case off so it remains cool. But I didn't see any really noticeable throttling frame rate dips due to this heat. So that's a good thing. So at least it's pulling the heat away with that copper transfer heat pipe. It's just getting a little hot to the touch. All right, so I think for the price of this phone, gaming performance is reasonable. It's very good with some titles. So for titles that support the 120 frames per second and extremely smooth, pleasant gaming experience, it is so good. Loudspeakers on this are very immersive. So for that title there, Grim Valor, you saw it was most of the time very close to 120 frames per second and lovely gameplay, very, very good having it just so smooth. Other titles like Mobile Legends, what on earth was going on there? It's the developers or the firmware is not supporting a higher frame rate. It was stuck for some silly reason at only just 30 frames per second. The resulting gameplay is what I wouldn't really call super smooth or anything like that. It's acceptable for that type of game, it's fine. And then PUBG, PUBG hovers around 45 frames per second to 40, which was very good. That's acceptable considering the chipset. I would like to see hopefully the developers and with firmware updates get at least 60 frames per second and later on hopefully they do add 120 support with the smooth setting. I think we might actually be able to push somewhere around 90 frames per second with this particular chip here. Now the other titles tested out Shadowgun Legends on the ultra high setting. It's poorly optimized and it's very demanding graphics. You will see some lag, well not really lag, but frame dips down to 39. And overall a good experience from the game. And other titles of course, like Call of Duty, that actually ran very well. So about an average of 50 frames per second on the high setting, 
for this price tag of phone is very good, that is excellent. So it's all down to developer support, adding the higher frame rate options will be there in the future eventually, considering that this is Qualcomm's newest chip here, the 732G, it is so new that developers just haven't added that option yet. So overall thermals, this was probably the gray area here. So when you're going for extended periods, my ambient temperatures right now are about 25, they were about 25, 26 degrees, it gets up to 48 degrees Celsius, okay? So that's getting warm. Now I didn't have the case on and I was not charging. If you intend to do both of those at the same time, expect it to get then to at least, I would say 50 degrees Celsius, it's gonna build up a bit of heat. The good thing out of this though, the positive we can take from that is it looks like that copper thermal transfer pipe and the graphite is definitely pulling the heat away from the system on a chip. So the Snapdragon 732G wasn't actually showing or exhibiting any serious throttling at all. That's the good thing there. I didn't see it throttle down in performance. I couldn't detect or see any real change in our FPS. So that is the positive there. So thank you so much for watching this gaming review. Check out my in-depth, full detailed review, which covers charging time, battery life, and various other tests. That's up here, the camera comparison. And down in the description, there is that link there, of course, to enter the giveaway to win your very own Poco X3 NFC.